John Bogle, the founder of Vanguard, he did so much for the investing world, introducing the cheapest way for individual investors like us to succeed in the market. He created the very first index fund. John Bogle states the importance of owning an index fund and how it is far superior to most actively managed funds. That the average investor has a high chance of success in investing if you just buy the haystack instead of trying to find the needle in it. In this video, I will talk about the best lessons I've learned from the book, The Little Book of Common Sense by John Bogle. The first lesson, instead of looking for the needle in the haystack, just buy the haystack. The haystack is the index fund. It is simply a basket or portfolio that holds many, many eggs, which is stocks, designed to mimic the overall performance of any financial market or sector. By investing in an index fund, this already eliminates the risk of individual stocks, market sectors, and manager selection. The only risk that remains is stock market risk because you don't need to find each good individual companies to invest in. You don't need to be afraid if one sector falls, like one that happened in 2000 from the tech bubble, or if the real estate market falls down. Since you already hold different stocks over different sectors by owning just one fund, you are completely diversified. Simply put, common sense investing tells us the winning strategy is to own all of the nation's publicly held businesses at a very low cost. By doing so, you are guaranteed to capture almost the entire return that they generate in the form of dividends and earnings growth. The second lesson, long term is the best way to go. John Bogle states that the stock market is a giant distraction that causes investors to focus on transitory and volatile investment expectations rather than on what is really important, which is the gradual accumulation of the returns earned by corporate business. He advises to us investors to ignore the short-term noise of the emotions reflected in our financial markets and focus on the productive long-term economics of corporate businesses. This was actually described by Benjamin Graham, the mentor of Warren Buffett in his book, The Intelligent Investor. In the short run, the stock market is a voting machine, but in the long run, it is a weighing machine. He even calls it by a name, Mr. Market. Now, Mr. Market is the one selling us stocks on a day-to-day -day basis and is quite emotional. So this means, as an investor with a portfolio of sound stocks, you should expect their prices to fluctuate and should neither be concerned by these declines nor become excited by sudden advances. Always remember that market quotations are there either to be taken advantage of or to be ignored. That's it. Don't listen to what Mr. Market is offering on a daily basis. These are all noise. And since we are holding an index fund, the more we don't need to care about these fluctuations. Since what we only need to do is to invest regularly and hold it for a very long time. If possible, forever. It's that easy. Third, don't allow a winner's game to be a losing game. I think you may have heard of Einstein's statement that the eighth wonder of the world is compounding interest. He who understands it, earns it. And he who doesn't, pays for it. In stocks, the wonderful magic of compounding returns is reflected in the long-term productivity of businesses, then is translated into equally wonderful returns in the stock market. But those returns are overwhelmed by the powerful compounding force of the cost of investing. John Bogle said, for those who choose to play the game, the odds in favor of the successful achievement of superior returns are terrible. By simply playing the game, consigns the average investor to a shortfall in the returns generated by the stock market over the long term. The game we are talking about is investing actively, actively trading, actively buying and selling stocks in the short term rather than focusing on the long hold. This is a game a lot of investors play. Most investors think that doing a lot of things is the best way to go to earn more in the market. And this is also what businesses use to persuade their clients. They say, don't just stand there, do something. But in reality, what works in the stock market is, don't do something, just stand there. This is to avoid playing the loser's game. Now this was well explained by the statement of the legendary investor himself, Warren Buffett. Returns decrease as motion increases, because a higher level of investment activity 
the greater the cost of financial intermediation and taxes. Just think of it this way. The more you buy and sell, the higher your fees or costs are, which means for us, higher costs means lower gains. Our goal as an investor is to lower costs as much as possible, which means higher gains for us, letting us use compounding in favor of us. Fees are a hindrance to long-term gain. This is also one of the reasons why a lot of actively managed funds underperform the index. By actively buying and selling stocks, active funds occur unnecessary taxes and fees. And you know, the worst thing about this, the fees usually come out of the pocket of its investors. Such funds charge higher fees while underperforming the index. Imagine, you are actually paying them more to underperform the benchmark. And this jumps us to the next lesson I've learned. Fourth, Consistency and Compounding Although some actively managed funds do beat the index, but only a few of them exist, and it's difficult to find, and even if you find one, it's not guaranteed that it will continue its good performance, since a lot of factors play. One such is a successful manager can retire or quit any time, and most mutual funds change their stock picks most of the time, occurring unnecessary taxes, and sometimes the stocks they pick don't often do well, which leads to another reshuffling since they need to satisfy their investors, unlike an index fund that stays consistent for a long period. Remember, consistency matters. A fund that is good or very good in the vast majority of years produces a far larger long-term return than a fund that is superb in half the years and a disaster in the remaining. And what some funds do is just tell investors the gross return of their fund, but in reality, after all the fees and taxes involved, the net return for its investors would be far less. Most investors take this for granted since it is hidden from view. Remember, fees also compound over a long time, and this applies to actively managed mutual funds. I think you heard the saying that in the stock market, time is very important for compounding to work. So to put it, where returns are concerned, time is your friend, but where costs are concerned, like the higher fees that actively managed funds charge you on a year-to-year -year basis, time is your enemy, as it also compounds over time. So for common sense investing, successful investing is about owning businesses and reaping the huge rewards of dividends and earnings growth for a long time, while maintaining costs as low as possible. That is what indexing is about. It doesn't shuffle investments like what managers do, and it doesn't charge you higher fees because it doesn't need a manager to actively pick stocks. So less activity, less fees, bigger gains for us investors. This lets compounding return working for us instead of against us. Lastly, take emotions out. For index fund investing, emotions would just be a hindrance to you. Now this is also applicable to any form of strategy you use in investing. Take emotions out. Fund investors usually look for the hot trending investment, letting their greed take control. Sadly, this is also what the fund industry itself has used. They bring out new funds to meet the fads and fashions of the day, often supercharged and speculative, and aggressively advertising and marketing them. John Bogle described it, Whenever counterproductive investor emotions are played on by ever counterproductive fund industry promotions, little good is apt to result. So as an intelligent investor, you better not heed the call. Don't let your emotions take control of your decisions. This is the best thing about index funds. Not only is it low on expenses, but it also eliminates those tempting fund choices that promise so much and deliver so little. And index funds can be held through thick and thin for an investment lifetime, so emotions need never enter the equation. Warren Buffett summarized this for us in what John Bogle called the four E's. The greatest enemies of the equity investor are expenses and emotions, so better remember that. So with that, this ends this video for today. To wrap it up, index funds are the best option for most investors out there, especially for those who doesn't have time or knowledge to analyze individual stocks. The strategy for it is a no-brainer. Just buy the haystack consistently over different time frames and hold it for a long time, if you can, forever. So I hope you've learned something, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you support the channel by clicking the like button. Now if you want to hear more book lessons, I have a playlist for it. 
I'll leave a link below. This is a good way to start learning more about investing. I really suggest you watch it, especially if you're new to investing. So thank you and see you in the next video.